Sri Lanka, although it's only about the size of Ireland, it has some seven and a half thousand elephants all living there. Sri Lankan elephants are, are different to African elephants and to some extent uh, to Indian elephants as well. They tend not to have tusks, so they don't get poached so readily, or at all really, uh, compared to their cousins in Africa and India. They're also much smaller, they tend to be uh, a sort of mountain variant of elephants. And during the Middle Ages, the, the so-called reservoir kings built these amazing reservoirs in the dry zone attracting the elephants down out of the mountains uh, because as the climate changed, the landscape became lusher and these mountain elephants descended to enjoy this enormous sort of salad-like uh, lowlands. Really, from that, uh, a new species evolving, thanks to us humans. And these elephants tend to follow uh, the same paths all the time, called anamacadas. And they've been following these paths for perhaps hundreds of years. Uh, humans often don't know where they are. Uh, and sometimes the paths get forgotten about for a while. But the elephants, of course, uh, remember them and will follow them uh, to get from their habitations to their feeding grounds. And they follow these straight paths uh, across the island. Uh, and so, in a sense, Sri Lanka is actually covered in this network of um, these secret elephantine paths. And it always struck me that Sri Lankan history or Sri Lankan story is a bit like that as well, in that there are these points of departure and arrival with patches of destruction uh, in between. It's never quite circular, but you always end up getting from one place to the other and finding yourself sort of back where you, where you started again. And I kind of imagine that uh, there's almost a map of, uh, of this uh, in the, it's sort of the elephantine mind, as it were, uh, the, the elephant complex. Mm -hmm.